What's going on? Welcome back to Tresence TV. My name is Trey Brooks. If this is your first time here, I'm a life insurance agent, uh, life insurance broker. I've been doing this for just a little bit over a year now. Primarily specialized in the IULs. Also do mortgage protection and some health insurance as well with accidental dental vision health and things like that. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about some tweaks and changes I've made in my IUL script, which has helped me go over $30,000 in a single month in annual production. Made some tweaks in my IUL script made some tweaks in my objection handling, and then made some tweaks in how I actually present the IUL um, to my client. So an issue that I was running into was being kind of too transactional, meaning um, black and white, X's and O's, does this number make sense? If this makes sense, then let's get this thing rolling, right? Now, some people don't operate that way. They are more uh, emotional. They think more emotionally. They make more decisions emotionally. With with most sales, um, they're emotionally based in background. So these questions and these changes in the script and everything will help empathize with the client more to allow them to understand that I understand where they are. I can see what they're trying to accomplish and know what they're trying to do. And it's not just a one-time sale. I'm building a client, um, not just trying to wheel, wheel and deal them uh, and sell them one time. Um, this is a more of a consultative approach, I would say, um, and just trying to build that clientele for the rest of my life. Um, not just a one-time deal. Okay. Let me share my screen with you guys here. Start off with, still with my warm-up. That's where I have my objection handling stuff. And uh, then we'll jump into my script. And then we'll jump into an IUL uh, where I will share my kind of my questions I ask and my stories I tell when I'm presenting the IUL, which will help kind of um, get to the close, essentially. Um, so first off, Wanted to say um, two books that kind of read time and time again. Um, Chris Voss, Never Split the Difference. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to show up on camera, but it's this book right here. Highly recommend this book. If you guys get your hands on this, um, great book. So a lot of the stuff that I've changed my script to comes from this book, as well as another book I started reading, which is um, Start With No, Go For No, something like that. Um, it's another negotiation book, which just talks about the win-win situation is not always the best that you want to look out for. So kind of what this is based around, give you guys an idea, but let me go ahead and share my screen with you. Let me get this thing rolling. Okay, so let me pull up my first warm-up here first. Uh, so that's kind of what I start with to start my day off. Um, this is what I read every day before I start my dials. Uh, again, it's just affirmations, things you can do for yourself. Um, big thing, highlight, don't take anything personal. These people don't know you um, quite yet. So uh, don't take anything personal. But I just wanted to talk about the objections I kind of changed and tweaked. Uh, let me get my marker here. Perfect, here we go. Uh, so uh, what I changed was... Uh, just want to be more agreeable with the client, empathize with them using tactical empathy, using labels, using mirrors um, from the book, Never Split the Difference, and Chris Voss, and another book that I'm currently reading as well. Um, just kind of sit shoulder, shoulder to shoulder with the client versus across the table with them. Um, just to kind of under, let them know that I understand where they are and where they're coming from, um, just to be more relatable and hopefully that will lower some resistance and be able to have more conversations uh, and create more clients. So. Uh, a popular one is don't have time right now. Call me later. Get this one all the time when people are at work. So the idea behind this is no problem. I'll go ahead and let you go to lower that resistance. Just called real quick to set up a better time to talk with you and figure out what you meant by insert their goal that they said in the lead form. So whether it was financial freedom, infinite banking, tax your retirement. Ask them, what, what does that mean to you exactly? Just to kind of get an idea of if we could even help you at all. And normally, people, clients will open up about what they meant with that goal. And then, of course, um, mirror them to let them know that you're listening and understanding. Mirroring is just saying the last few words that they said. Do a schedule investigation, figure out when they're off work, when they're home, set, and then tie down the appointment um, just like that. So that's actually my favorite objection that I can get a lot of appointment set from but it's you have to be careful i have to be careful and not to just do a quick set and make sure that i'm getting through all the bullet points as fast as possible again because i don't want to take up their time because they're, they're busy at work um so another big change was i'm not interested 
This one, I feel like my previous objection was kind of combative. Um, so I kind of rewrote this all together um, to be on the same side as them. So I get people who call me all the time and I never really listen to them because I know I didn't fill out anything. It's only like Medicare or, or the election stuff because it is uh, the end of October here. There's election going on. But uh, so be agreeable with them. And someone who gets phone calls out of the blue who's frustrated with them is automatically going to say, I'm not interested. So I'll agree with them by saying, hey, of course, it sounds like you're just kind of tired of people calling you all the time about stuff you don't really remember, you don't know. Uh, but go ahead and close down your file. While, while I close you out, just kind of curious, what did you mean by, again, insert their goal? So the whole strategy about this is getting them to lower that resistance, lower that wall, let them know we're sitting shoulder to shoulder. I'm kind of frustrated with people calling me all the time, too, for stuff that I have no idea what they're talking about or don't really remember clearly. Or if it was, it was a long time ago. Let them know. I'll go ahead and close them down. No big deal. And just out of my, cur my out of my personal curiosity, what did you mean by that goal to spark conversation? From there, we're going to go back to that schedule investigate, set, and tie down. Um, now, again, this isn't going to work every time. This is going to increase your chances of setting those appointments and converting on more leads, which is the goal for everybody. Um, next common objection I get is I'm covered already. So in this situation, we're just going to be using a mirror, get them to kind of open up. Hey, hey, Trey, I'm covered already. Covered already? Okay, cool. That's great. And normally they'll actually respond after you after you mirror them. Um, so I'd definitely wait for a pause um, in silence. Um, so actually, I'll put that in right here. Um, just to mirror them to give them time to think of what they're going to say next is they're going to tell you about their policy, what they bought and what they're covered. So actually hey, I'm covered already. Okay. Covered already. Um, okay. And pause and wait for them. And they might say, they should say something about the policy and what they got or when they got it or, or whatever and so forth. Um, if not, you just kind of continue on. Um, it's great, man. Uh, I thought nobody had reached out to, uh, but it sounds like you're, you're pretty confident with what you purchased. You're hundred percent satisfied. Uh, with how it's going to help you with insert their goal again um, to kind of trigger that what they were looking for and what they were trying to do. Is that right? Again, I might change this ending right here. I'm going to do some testing with this this ending because I feel like this is going to result in a lot of yeses, which would kind of back me into a corner. Um, so I might change that, but I'm definitely going to keep that first part of that, that conversation there. Um, because most people aren't 100% satisfied with anything that they bought. Like I've got this iPhone that's been messed up for I don't know how long and I need to get it fixed. And then reincorporating their goal that they sent on their lead form just kind of spark that memory and spark that conversation. Um, if again, they say that they're, they're good still, no worries. Hey man, I understand you, you made your decision. Uh, let me ask you, do you shop around when you buy a car, or a house or, or auto insurance or, or do you just kind of go with the first option? Um, this is kind of a last resort um, because 99.99% .99 of people I've ever met do shop around. They don't buy the very first thing that they look at um, unless they're impatient or maybe they're on the run from something. Uh, but most people do shop around, so it might trigger them be like, hey, you know what? When I do these other buying uh, habits, when I make these other purchases, I do shop around and look for other things. Uh, so maybe I should do the same thing with this. Just kind of plant that seed. Uh, in their mind before you uh, obviously have to let them go if, if they're still not interested. But that's kind of the last resort there if they're already covered um, just to shop around. And that's where you can introduce if you are an insurance broker, you can sh shop around for them, let them know that you might be able to save them on money, provide better options with living benefits and kind of things like that. Um, so that's the changes I made with my objections. Again, to sit more shoulder to shoulder with the client, not to, to be more agreeable and to kind of open up and, and spark that conversation more. And uh, always remember, a quitter never wins and a winner will, will never quit. Uh, so let's jump over here to my script as well. I made some similar changes uh, with the same ideology. Let's get this pulled up here. So we had a guy do um, IUL training a few months ago. Uh, Eli Sarge, she does like over $80,000 in annual production per month. So super rock star. Um, kind of transcribed, use AI to transcribe his script, and then I've made tweaks to it to better fit my diction and, and my personality 
uh, for me to be able to speak it more clearly. Uh, so I kind of took out the intro where it's like, ring, ring, hello, this is John. Hey, John, this is Trey, yada, 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 because you guys aren't going to get much value from that. I just kind of want to stick to meats and potatoes and keep the script as short as possible so it can be easier to um, not remember in a sense, but easier to hold on to those highlight points that you should remember and are, are key to implement. Um, so again, this intro, I'll put notes over here on the side. Um, this intro here is literally just to get them to remember what they did and what they filled out. So just asking about the IUL or asking about the mortgage protection if they remember. So that's all this first section is about right here. And nine times out of 10, they do remember if you bring up infinite banking, tax retirement, generational wealth, kind of things like that. If they don't, um, I kind of will incorporate their goal and what they said they were looking to do. And ask if that rings a bell and tell people kind of how it's used. If that doesn't work, then I send them a quick two-minute video about the IOL that gives them a breakdown that will kind of jog their memory. So most of the time, I don't have that issue. Um, so it's really going back into the rest of the script. So um, obviously, they were putting in, they were just trying to get more information. So I kind of let them know that, like, hey, man, I'm not dumb. Uh, I know what you were, you were just trying to get more information and you said your goal was X, Y, Z, but what did you kind of mean by that? What, what kind of stuck out to you about that? To get them one to open up about their goal. So I get their why very early on, which is important for setting the appointment. So I want to get their why. And then I want to understand why that why is so important or let them at least let them know. I know why that why is so important. So Obviously, it's only going to be a set few things that you can practice um, for their why. Um, if they want to have money for retirement, then obviously they don't want to worry about their financial future. They obviously don't want to worry about maybe relying on the government. They maybe don't want to run out of money for retirement, so on and so forth. Maybe they don't want to run or rely on their family for money in their retirement. So you can kind of say those things. There's only going to be a set amount of things that people want to accomplish. So, so going back down into after they... they uh, they say what they meant with their goal and kind of what they want to get more information about right here. So here's a generic answer. This is super surface level that a client might say, Hey, well, honestly, just kind of want to get more information about how it all works. Okay. Just get a little bit more information. Uh, sounds good. And that uh, sounds like you want to, again, you can either, you can either do the opposite of their goal here, which I got notes here on my phone. Give me a second. Uh, where's this at? You can do the opposite of their goal here. Paraphrase goal. Sounds like you want to make sure you have enough money for retirement. Uh, set up a tax free retirement. Make sure your family's taken care of when you pass away. Um, kind of go into detail uh, about what most clients that you have want with that similar goal because it's again going to be about the same. You can do the opposite of the goal. So if they take no action, then this happens. They run out of money in retirement. They stay in the rat race. They worry about money. They stress about the financial future. So that's adding bad stuff to the, if they take no action. You could also add good stuff if they do take desired action. So you'd be like, okay, cool. So it sounds like that you want to take, you want to set up a, a retirement so that in the future you don't have to worry about uh, finance. You don't have to worry about your financial future. You can go on vacations. You can retire in peace. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. So you can add good stuff to if they take action. You can take away bad stuff if, for taking action. You can add bad stuff. If they do nothing. Um, and then you can also take away good stuff if they do nothing as well. So uh, that's kind of the strategy with this line here to help empathize with them and show that you're listening. So you have those four options um, to kind of get that started. Um, I normally will just go with adding benefits or adding the good stuff if they take the desired action. So again, I'll break down those four. It's adding good stuff. Um, adding good stuff they get if they take a desired action, which would be obviously getting the product. Um, take away bad stuff for, for doing, doing the desired action, which is, again, getting the product. But you just take away the negative stuff instead of adding positive stuff. Um, if they don't do the action, so let's say... Um, they're not too interested with the IUL. That's where you add bad stuff if they do nothing or something different. Or you can take away good stuff if they do nothing as well. So those are your four options to kind of uh, for persuasion, essentially. But most of the time, I'll go with a label that sounds like you want to accomplish 
either the opposite of their goal or something similar with their goal to help them understand that I'm listening and I understand where they are and they, what they want to do. Um, go into the rest of the script, let them know that uh, it's not really a fit for everybody because right now I don't know you, I don't really know what your goal is exactly or if this could even help you. But I've helped many clients who have had a similar goal. Everyone's in a different situation. So let them know that it's not a one size fits all for everybody. Um, so it's not super, uh, I have a lack of words for this, not super salesy and be like, oh, yeah, 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 I can do that. No problem. Um, just let them know that there is differences between every single person. Um, but I have helped people who are similar to you. Everybody's situation is a little bit different. So we kind of have to understand how that situation is for us to be able to know if this is kind of going to be a fit for you. Make sense? Um, then from there, you just go into the rest of your, the rest of my uh, appointment set, which is just letting them know kind of what we're going to do and how this would work for them. Just go over an example of how your cash will grow over time and then touch base on the different ways that they can use it for Again, you could just say all the different topics about the IUL, or you can just kind of insert their goal there back to them. Uh, and then ask if you did something like that, do they feel like it would help to kind of commit them to that, that appointment? And then double down. I like to double down here. Um, double check to move this up to the appointment. Okay, perfect. So if we did sit together and look at an illustration, you feel like that could help you? And they're probably going to say yes, 99% of the time. Otherwise, you wouldn't have got here. Um, the rest of my script, it's pretty standard. Um, just setting in, uh, changing words from I to we to client instead of person or lead or, or customer, just changing that word to client. Uh, let's see here. My test reminders, just going in through the tie down. So that's pretty standard. Okay, cool. Spike my time, yada, yada, yada. And then the closing paragraph right here in, in my script here, where I'm letting the client go is uh, letting them know that we're not going to take too much time. The most important thing is educating you and kind of figuring out something like this is going to help you. Let them know we're going to take maybe 10 to 15 minutes to go over that illustration, that information. And let them know there, there is possible next steps if they feel like it's something that could help them. And then let them know that we won't get that far until they get a better understanding of how it all works. So again, I uh, want to lower that sales resistance, but let them know that there is next steps if it is something that that's going to work for them. And then just go into the rest of the close and the tie down for the appointment. So biggest takeaways here is up here in the beginning is empathizing with them using this mirror and label to let them know that I understand their why and to relate to them that I've helped many clients who have a similar goal to again, get them to want to sit down and go to, to, to this meeting or to this console. And um, adding in that everyone's in a different situation as well will further that point because it's not a one size fits all. Um, they're going to have to learn. We're going to have to talk about different things that they're going through and want to accomplish to see if this is actually going to work for them and be a fit. So those are the biggest takeaways here is using their goal, um, their why, and using that to those four parts of persuasion, adding good stuff that they do, if they do something, taking away bad stuff, if they do something, taking away good stuff, if they don't do anything, and then adding bad stuff, if they don't do anything. Uh, so those are your four main points from the script here. And then let's jump over to an actual illustration here where I can show you what I do, what I'll ask and kind of go over with the appointment questions um, while I'm in the IUL itself. So on the left side here, this is Winplex with Mutual of Omaha. Um, this is where I do a lot of IULs because they have a, a actually a phenomenal product. And um, I, I stand by this product. So that's why I like going with them. On this first page here, uh, when I set that appointment, I sent them my digital business card, which has all my social media, which has all my state licenses and things like that. So I'm going to go back over that with them, make sure that they understand the importance of it. Again, to prevent any objections later on, we're going over social security number, we're going over routing numbers and kind of things like that. So get that all out of the way and let them know, seeing my social medias and stuff, that I'm a real regular person too, just like them. I have a family, so on and so forth. So just letting them know that I'm a real person here as well, not just someone they meet online and peers to the, the, the internet. 
also we'll, we'll do a small story on why I do this. So if you guys didn't know, I actually got my first, what I thought was an IUL when I was 24, it turned out to be a whole life policy and then doing more research on that. That's kind of what got me into doing this and providing financial education to the community, especially the minority community who doesn't, who don't normally have access to this education or who don't really understand what this means and things like that. So that's personally why I started doing this and why I'm actually creating this video. Again, different from a different perspective to kind of help you as an agent be better in your business and help more people. And then I'm just going to talk about a little bit about their family, their what they do for work, so I can get an idea of the two parts of the IUL. You have your right hand and left hand, who that death benefit is going to go to, that generational wealth, uh, and that left hand is that cash value. So I kind of frame it in that way so I can talk about their family and pin that cash or that death benefit to their family and make sure um, – make sure that there's an attachment there uh, as well. Then kind of get the work so I can understand what type of person my client is, what is going to be a feasible budget and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then before jumping into the IUL here, I'm going to re go over their why. Kind of want to go back over what they stated their, their goal was. And then why is that, why is that goal so important to you? Again, don't have to ask that question directly. It's highlighted. You can use a label or mirror to kind of assume in a sense, which again, most clients are going to have similar goals because there's only so many options that they could want to achieve, right? So whether that's um, generational wealth for their family, um, they just want to make sure that 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 next generation is taken care of because of X, Y, Z. And then you can go into deeper about why they want that that generation to be taken care of or tax free retirement because maybe they don't have any retirement set up or they don't have enough money in their 401k. So you can kind of frame around those things right now. And then after that, use a mirror to let them know that you're listening and understand what they're saying. Uh, kind of ask what have they done in the past to kind of help with that goal, whether it's retirement, generational wealth, anything at all. Um, again, because we want to get from where they are down here and create separation to where they could be to achieve that goal. So that's why we're asking these questions here. So have you tried anything in the past to help? If it's yes, cool. How long have you tried that? How has it worked good for you? How has it worked bad for you? So on and so forth. Just have a conversation about it. Um, if no, same thing. But like, okay, so this is the first thing you're kind of looking at, yada, yada, yada. So this is important to you, essentially. And then if they have done it, how long have you tried this and, and what hasn't worked out? So on and so forth. Um, and then again, to kind of finish off their why you can use this, uh, this label here. Again, it seems like it sounds like that the opposite of their goal. So you not having enough money for retirement is one of your biggest financial fears. So as that in a uh, kind of a sincere, confused tone. So after they tell you all this information, of course, um, you have having a great conversation with your client and just be like, okay, so it seems like, um, this is super important to you and you kind of not getting enough money for retirement is kind of one of your, your biggest financial fears. Just like that. Um, just end it in an upswing because you're asking a question and um, just and then listen to what they say, of course. So jumping into the actual IUL. So most of the time we're going to spend on this page here or not even sharing my screen yet, just talking on Zoom. Uh, then we're going to jump over to the IUL. We've already gone over my license information here and stuff. So I'm going to jump to this page first. Kind of talk about what they have with work policies. Again, that's why I got that information first. And we're going to first talk about that right hand leg of the IUL. So I explained to clients that IUL works like this. Your money goes in, your investment goes in. You have a right hand and a left hand. The right hand is your death benefit. And that left hand is your cash value. Now that right hand is how you create that generational wealth. Then go ahead and ask a question. But ask a question that kind of spends that money for them. Be like, so, hey, Mr. Client. Um, so I was kind of curious, what would have happened if you passed away? What would that next, if you passed away yesterday? Um, financially, what would that look like for your family in the next 30, kind of 60, 90 days? And they'll talk to you. And now you could get a surface level answer, which is fine. You'll just have to, to get them to open up more um, by kind of disarming them and, and letting them know that you're just trying to help them, uh, essentially. But hopefully they should open up to you and be like, well, obviously things would be pretty difficult. Um, or you could even say that yourself. Be like, hey, so obviously um, if something were to happen to you yesterday, obviously kind of financially 
or obviously it'd be kind of difficult for your family, but financially, kind of what would that look like? And they might him and ha not know, be like, well, I would insert the death benefit. How would that change your family's next 30, 60, 90, or a year of the rest of their lives? How would that money change for them? I know obviously they're still going to be sad, um, and $300,000 is not enough for one's life, in my opinion. But what would that do for their lives? How would that make you feel that when you walked out on life, this 300,000 walked into their life and you did that for them? Um, again, to kind of get them attached to this right hand leg, um, because most people want the cash value, but you want to get them attached to this right hand leg and again, help their family out, which again, that's all you're trying to do. And then also you can even say in that question with something happened to you yesterday, and I don't mean just passing away, if you got disabled, if you got sick with cancer, and then you can explain the benefits of the uh, the living benefits and the benefits of those where not all life insurance policies um, have living benefits. So you can say the, the beauty of Mutual of Omaha, the beauty of the IUL with Mutual of Omaha is that not only if you pass away, but if X, Y, Z happens, then then you can actually use that as well. Because most people actually lose their home. They lose stuff in their life because they get disabled and they can't work, not just because they passed away. So that's how I'll explain the death benefit, that right harm, um, that generational wealth, kind of depending on what they're looking at. Now, if they're more focused on the generational wealth side, that right leg, then I'll spend more time there. But if they're more focused on retirement, financial freedom, kind of things like that, that's how I'll frame that right hand side. And then the cash value will go on to here next. So if you guys have any comments, you can drop me, or if you have any questions, you can drop me a comment down below. Super responsive, we're getting back to questions and comments. Also, if you want me to share any of the documents that I've used here, I will email those to you, no problem, don't mind. Um, don't mind at all, just change them to however you feel like you say words differently. We don't speak the same, most likely. So if some words are weird to you, go ahead and change it, make it customizable for yourself. I think sales in general um, is, kind of trial and error, finding your blueprint of what works and then making small changes along the way that better fit your personality and who you are to ultimately become more than just the average is kind of how you have to figure it out. So let's jump back over here to the IUL. Um, I can blow this up too. Um, center. Jump back over here to the IUL, another page I like to talk about with clients as important. Um, a lot of people are interested in the IUL because they don't want to lose money. They they have the idea of, I can protect my income, I can protect my retirement from market loss. So this page here illustrates that, called the S&P 500 page, as you guys can see over here on my cheat sheet page right here, S&P 500. And again, just want to make this more relatable to the client. So I'll let them know. Ask them kind of based on their investing background, if they know about the S&P 500 at all, if they do any investing, just to kind of get a gauge of how in depth I can go, because I don't want to overwhelm them. So confused mind doesn't buy. So if they're not into investing at all, I'll keep it super simple. They're like, so the S&P 500 is the stock market for the top 500 companies in the United States. And this column here is their annual return since 2004. And I go through all the years and I highlight 2008, obviously, because it lost 40%. Um, I'll highlight some, some positive years like 2017. And then I'll highlight the most notable year, negative year, 2022, sorry. And I'll, I'll tell this story. Um, so story on Tracy's 401k. So I used to sell cars and um, my boss, my vice president, her and I believe her vice president or her assistant, they weren't able to retire. This was back in 2022, right here, when their 401ks took, took such a big hit. 20% of their retirement was gone. One-fifth of their retirement was gone, wiped out. So they couldn't retire that year. So she had to work an extra few years to replace that income that was in that retirement account. Um, so kind of, Mr. Client, have you thought about what that would do to you if you lost a big chunk of your retirement account uh, because of a crash in the stock market? Most of the time, they might say, no, I haven't really thought about that. Well, would you want to work a few more years when you were already time to retire? You banked on this. You planned this out. You already planned trips. Now you can't retire or you can retire, but you're going to have to use drastically less money or lower your standard of living. Now, if my vice president would have had that same money in the IUL, if you look at 2022, 
she would have got a 0% return, meaning she could have retired on time. She would have lost no money and she would have been well on her way into retirement. And then that next year, she would have got a 9.5% return or 9.25% return. Um, so that's kind of a reason why a lot of people move their money to the IUL is because they're protected from market downside. So like 2008, we got a 0% return instead of losing 40%. All the other years, you get a great return as well. 9.25% in this in this column, the account, if the stock market is going to go negative, you're going to get a 0% return, meaning your money is protected. Um, other years, 9.25, so on and so forth. So this account here is super, super uh, consistent. Now you might be like, hey, Trey, well, 2017, stock market hit 19.42%, and you guys only gave me 9%. What, what happened to that other 10%? Well, Mr. Client, this account here is capped. But there are strategies that some of my clients do who are a little bit more open to risk. They're still not going to lose money, but this account over here is not as consistent as the S&P 500. But you can see back in 2017, that actually earned 24%. So this account will give you those big upswings that you're kind of looking for. Um, and this account will give you that consistency. So what I would recommend, if you want to have a chance at getting those big upswings, is doing a 50-50 split. So back to this drawing here, what you can do is, what we can do, you don't have to manage this. This is kind of where I come in, help you manage this part. Your cash values here, we can split that cash value into two accounts. So we can do this account 50% and this account 50%, or you can do 60-40, 70-30 split, doesn't really matter. Does that make sense? Make sure they're still following and understand. Uh, and then just ask kind of which way they want to set it up later on after going to look over that. So if they do give you that objection, they want to get more than 9.25% for Bank or for Mutual of Omaha, we have the Bank of America account that I would recommend as well. But I wouldn't say put all your eggs in this basket because it does not consistently get the return of the S&P 500 account, but it does give you a chance to hit those big upswings. So that's why I would say you should put some money in here if you're more open to a little bit more risk, right? So that's the story I'll tell here. Tracy, my vice president, uh, her assistant had that issue with her 401k uh, because 2022 tank. Um, then I'll go down to the cash value screen down here. So I'll talk about the charts here, uh, mainly focus on obviously this non-guaranteed because that's closest to what they're gonna get returned. So I'll mention back to that screen we just looked at, which showed all the interest rates and just let them know that we're gonna look at this one because it's most likely what's going to happen for um, for their account. So I'll show them the difference between the accounts and what they all mean. Obviously, then we're looking at retirement or generational wealth, and I'll focus on a certain age and then focus on a certain dollar amount that they want to get to by X time to kind of build that retirement account, to build that financial freedom, kind of just depending on who the person is and why they want the IUL. Each part of this is going to be customizable. Uh, but a question I would ask, is um, if they want retirement, if they want financial freedom, how would you feel by age 50 or age 60, whatever age it is, that you have $83,000 growing, which means six and 10% interest, you can access it tax-free and it's protected from market downside. How would that make you feel knowing that you've done that? Just again, to kind of pick their brain and, and idea to see how, how their mind is looking right now. Um, obviously, this will kind of tell you if you're gonna have a good chance to close, or not. Um, so, so that's kind of that's kind of what a question I would ask here. Talk about cash value again. It's going to be different for everybody's goal and kind of what they want to uh, accomplish. Um, the only other page I spend time on for the illustration is the maximum and minimums. Let them know that there's a minimum each year that they have to accomplish, which is to set up above that minimum. Tell them obviously don't hit the minimum um, because they're not going to get much cash value growth. What most of my clients do is they try to hit this maximum, which is $10,734 per year. They use tax returns, work bonuses, Christmas money, things like that to kind of hit that chunk. So you don't have to make the same payment every month. Let's set it up at something comfortable for you, $150, $200, $100. And then months where you can do extra, let's invest extra. And that's just going to provide more fruit for you down the road and have a bigger retirement account, have more money for your family, so on and so forth. So that's the last page I'll spend time on here. And then ask again, is there anything else that they kind of want me to go over for, go over with them um, before we kind of request for approval? So that's one of my objection finding closes right here to the right side of the screen over here back on Word is 
Is there any additional information that I can go over to help you feel confident before we request for approval? And if any objections are gonna come out, they're gonna come out right there at that question. Um, or another question you can ask, is there anything that would kind of hold you back from requesting for approval if you feel like this could help you with XYZ goal? So those are two um, questions geared towards closing that will find um, or, or highlight with a flashlight any objections that are, that are hiding. Um, now, after that, you go over that information with them, handle those objections if there are any. Um, then you can go into close. Um, if you feel like this can help you, let's request for approval. Um, or this is my favorite one. This is obviously a great opportunity because it helps people um, create a tax for retirement. Um, kind of similar to what you're looking for. But the biggest reason why not everyone kind of has a product like this is because not everyone qualifies. Um, so if you feel like this is something that could kind of work out for you, let's go ahead and request for approval since this seems like it, it is going to help you. Um, is that fair? And then boom, lock them down, write the application, and then you just helped another family create um, generational wealth, create a, a tax tree retirement, and so on and so forth. Um, while kind of sitting shoulder to shoulder with them, looking at this information, you being the expert in knowing how to explain it, not selling it to them, but sitting there shoulder to shoulder, showing them how this could highlight their future and what could happen if they don't take action, which is potentially lose 20% of their retirement account here with story on Tracy's 401k, kind of things like that. So those are some things that I've tweaked in my IUL script, in my IUL objection handling, and in my presentation for the IUL. Hopefully this will help me stay more consistent, help more families and create a bigger book of business to help more clients, which is ultimately what everybody wants. Again, shoot me a comment down below if you have any questions. Um, if you know me personally, you know how to reach me. If not, just comment here, email, phone number, and I can reach out to you or my team can reach out to you with anything you want or if you want these documents that I shared here with you. But um, next time on Trusted TV, we will see you and uh, take care. Good luck.